You'll be seeing if Eddie's back yet. It's time to go and get the children from Ochtan. No, no, no. He'll hide away for the rest of the day, like his wounds. Give him a bit of time, a bit of space. He'll be okay. <laughs> Supposing he isn't. What are you going to do then? I am not going to do anything. Look, you see, fit flange A into slot B, then cut along the dotted line. No, I've done that twice already. Listen, I think you should have a word with sorry. No, it's too early to bring sorry into it. He's at his employer, after all. All the more reason then for letting him know that he might have a problem in his hands. What problem? Look, if Eddie doesn't get back to the ferry tomorrow, then it's up to Sorry to find a replacement. Let a push. I can run the ferry for a day or two. You're making a big mistake, Brian. Sorry is just as fond of Eddie as you are, and he's got a right to know. Ah, you're a persistent creature. All right, see if you can contact Sorry at the Octan or the Marina. Mm -hmm. I'll go around and see if Eddie's back yet. Come on, Morag. You have to admit, it wasn't a nice thing to do. Och, he'll live. Well, I think it was pretty rotten of Heather McNeil to lead him up the garden path like that and then just leave him in the lurch. I don't think we have to worry too much about Augie. He'll not be down for long. He's the sort that always bounces back. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he's bouncing back somewhere already. Mm, I suppose you're right. Oh, and so's Heather. Mrs Lachlan's wishing she hadn't bounced back to Glendara. Oh, why is that? She seems to be making a dead set for Duva. <laughs> and there's him thinking I'm doing the same. But the two of us after him, he'll be feeling like a hunted rabbit. Well, I just hope he keeps running. Well, oh, not from you, Morag. I didn't mean that. Listen, if Dougal ever stops running away from me, I'll stop running after him. Mm. Well, just the same. I think Mrs Laughlin has reason to worry about Dougal and Heather. It seems that he's asked her to tea. Mm. It's not like Dougal. Unless... No, that's ridiculous. Well, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, unless he's taken a notion to her. Oh, but I don't believe that. I mean, Dougal's instinct for self-preservation wouldn't let him get that involved. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dougal, and what do you want? Where's my mother? Well, Bob's taking her back to the croft. Mm. Uh, Dougal, mm -hmm. are you not going to say hello? No. Oh, Dougal, now you've hurt my feelings. Do you remember that tip of mine that you were always making disparaging remarks about? Oh, that was just jealous, Dougal. Aye, ah, because you didn't have one as good. No, because you never said as nice things about me as you did about that beast. Well, it is a fine beast. I've just been showing it to Heather, and she thinks it's a fine beast. And what would Heather know about tops? Or anything else that doesn't have two legs and wear trousers, for that matter? Dougal. She is not from a farming family. Maybe not directly, but she has lots of relatives that are farmers and crofters. It'll be in her blood. Is that a fact? Aye, it is. Oh, she'd make a good wife for a man that raises sheep. Don't, but no warrant. You know that, Sergeant, and I know that, but who else is here to see? Ready? What's up? Well, we wanted a word with Eddie Bryan and the front door was lying open. Yeah, well, I wanted a word with him myself. Is he not here? No, I have no idea where he might be. Not offhand. Seems to have left in a hurry. What's this all about? Is there anything the matter with Eddie? Not <laughs> that I know of. Why do you ask? Well, I heard he took the ferry across the Octam this morning because he was ill. Aye, that's right. I did. Uh, he was a wee bit under the weather. If he's that ill, what's he doing out now? Well, how should I know? Sheila's not here either. So I see. Is there anything you want to tell us, Brian? Look, I don't want this spread all around the district. Well, I'll be as discreet as circumstances will allow. Sheila's left him. I see. 
We had a few CID before we do, will you tell him to get in touch with us? Sure, but what about the... Uh... Well, just pull the door behind you. We don't want to put temptation in other people's way. Good day. Oh, Mrs. Mack. Enter at your own risk, Minister. I beg your pardon? That boiler has rendered this place a potential death trap. Oh, that? I wouldn't worry too much about it. I just stopped in to see if all was in order for the choir practice well, tonight. as much order as can be expected, considering I don't know whether I'm coming or going. <laughs> that uh, rather depends on the boiler, I'd say. Look, this is not a joking matter. And even if it was, I'd hardly have time to appreciate it, what with choir practices and community council meetings all going on on the same night. Quite so. And all I can say is, thank goodness that Cameron woman's away. I had a daft keep fit class this morning. And no doubt the police will be in asking me to give evidence against Eddie Randy before the day's out. Come, come, Mrs. Mack. You've absolutely no proof that Eddie had anything to do with the money that went missing from your handbag. Getting the proof is a job for the police, so common sense could tell anybody who the culprit is. That is a completely unwarranted assertion. Is it? We all know what a bad upbringing that boy had, and we all know what his father was like. Let Blood will out. Let not the sins of the fathers... I'm talking about the sins of the sons. He was never out of trouble at one time. That was before he was married. What's that got to do with it? But marriage often helps people to settle down. Then it seems to have failed with Eddie Ramsey. I'll come quietly. I've always wanted to say that, Sergeant. Ah, you might be lucky enough never to have to say it in earnest, Mr. Taylor. Have you been out and about? I've just been up at the hill lofts checking the fingerlings I put in last week. Seen anything of Eddie Ramsey in your travels? I haven't seen anything of anybody. Besides, you don't often see Eddie up this way. That's why. He might just be up this way today. Sorry, I don't get the drift. And I'd forget that the constable said that. If you like. While we're talking, I've got a communication from Mr. Snedden. He tells me you intend poaching a fish from one of his locks. As a matter of fact, I do. Then I think again, Mr. Taylor. Oh, I don't think I will, Sergeant. You see, I've got a sort of bet on with him. Well, Snedden's not treating it like that. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you do get a call from Snedden saying I'm poaching on Letter Fallach, I'd like you to remember something. What? The story of old Todd Gallagher? Aye. Old Todd Gallagher. I'd forgotten about that one. Crystal! Hey, hey! I found the missing bits. I think we'll give it the place of honour, eh? No, no, it'll be in Fox Road there. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. There. No, that's worse. Ah, oh, come on, Isabel! It's very big. It's a work of art. Oh, I suppose you can leave it there meantime. Good day. Well, afternoon, folks. Oh, hello. How's it? Fine. Uh, Isabel said you wanted to talk to me on uh, a matter of some urgency. Carmichael's not creating problems for you, is he? No, no, it's about Eddie. Why? What's happened? Sheila's left him. Oh, I see. And he'll be taking it very badly, I imagine. You know, for all their troubles, they were fond of each other. You don't sound too surprised. I'm not. They had so much to get over, and, well, they weren't making a very good job of it. I suppose we'll just have to hold his hand till she comes back. Now, that's the way I see it. You know, I took the kids across to Octan on the ferry this morning. I'll bring them back this afternoon. Oh, that's very good of you, Brian. It's the least I can do. But you think Eddie will be all right for work tomorrow? Oh, Brian thinks so. You have your doubts? I'm not so sure. Ah, well, look, I'd better go and have a word with him myself. Uh, hold on, sorry. You haven't heard the whole story. Sergeant Murray is looking for Eddie. Well, what for? I don't know. But I know Murray well enough to know it's serious. Don't show your face in here again.
Sorry to break it, Ramsey. Let him go, Constable. What's this all about? I asked him to leave it shut in time, but he had other ideas. Sergeant, he's legless. I can see that. He wanted to see the manager. Did you know? Why? She treated Sheila like dirt when she worked there. I wanted to punch him in the mouth. Aye, and you'd probably got yourself into more trouble. I just don't want to punch him now. The guy was probably right anyway. Right, OK, just leave this with us. OK, we'll swing him a cell till he cools down and maybe ask him about Mrs. Mack's money. No, there's been no official complaint made about that yet. He was brawling in the street. And there's no sense out of him in the state he's in. So what do we do with him? Put him in the car, we'll take him home and see him in the morning when he's sober. Oh, oh. I was afraid he would get into that state. Where do you know? And what makes you think that? I brought him in on the bus this morning. He was in a funny mood. OK, on your feet. Oh. oh, here. You better check that he hasn't lost his money. What money? The money he had when he got off the bus. There was an awful lot of it. service instead of hanging around waiting for somebody to appear. Well, now that I've appeared, what can I do for you? Well, it's all there. Yes, you uh, could have served yourself, of course. I don't approve of this self-service system. It only encourages shoplifting. And when things go missing, people get the blame. I can't say I've found such dishonesty in Vendarif myself, Mrs. Murray. You've been very, very lucky. You'll have heard about Eddie Ramsey. Yes, I've heard. I wasn't aware it was public knowledge, though. What everybody knew by this time. Look, I'm sure it's no more than a tiff. Sheila will be back to him in no time. Oh, so she's had the good sense to leave him, has she? And it's taken her long enough to realise what she's like. There is nothing wrong with Eddie. No, I could tell you one or two things about Eddie Ramsey if I hadn't promised the minister not to. But no doubt you'll hear soon enough. No, not that bashed one is a all. Oh, hello, Miss Dillon. I'll be with you in a moment, just when I've finished with Mrs. Mack. Oh, I'm in no hurry, Mrs. Blair. Good afternoon, Mrs. Mack. Good afternoon. No, that's you. I'll just charge it to the man, Sir Zimmer. Oh, right. Well, you were going to the choir practice this evening, Miss Simmons. Oh, I will indeed. Good. I always say there's no point in hiding away from people when they're talking about you. Just give them more to talk about. She does say some daft things, doesn't she? Eddie. Yeah? Eddie. Huh? It's me, Carol. Oh, I can see that. What the hell are you doing here? Is it true about Sheila? <sighs> well? Well, if anyone should know the answer to that, it's you. How did I know anything? Because you and Sheila arranged the whole thing between you. And now, thanks to you, she's gone and left me for a Steve guy. I never arranged anything, oh, Eddie. Oh, come off it. Don't shout at me, Eddie Ramsey. I'd no idea Sheila was going to leave you. Would I have come here if I did? Don't play the innocent with me. I saw Sheila's letter. And I know that she got Steve to send it to you. Well, I can explain that, Eddie. Don't bother. Just get the hell out of here and leave me in peace. It was up to me at the time. And furthermore, I would suggest that this is not a proper matter for the community council. This is a matter of community consent, so who better to discuss it? I agree with the minister. But at the same time, this isn't a matter that can just be swept under the carpet. Mr. Murray, right. I'm not suggesting that anything should be swept under the carpet. I just feel that we've spent far too long 
discussing a totally unsubstantiated rumour. More than idle gossip, you know. And uh, since none of us appears to have the slightest doubt that Miss Simmons is, to say the least, unlikely to have behaved in the manner these letters suggest, mm -hmm. I propose that the matter be left and the business of the meeting concluded. Yes, here I here disagree, right Mr. Chairman. I was afraid you might, <sighs> Mr. Oh, I know how anxious you have to get back to your beloved choir practice, Minister. <laughs> but you don't have kids at school, and other people have. But really, I think I must take exception to this implication. The children have to be considered. And I, for one, don't want my children exposed to any risks, no matter how unlikely some folk think that might be. Oh. What then are you suggesting, Mr. Craig? Well, I propose, Mr. Chairman, that we investigate the accusations made against her. I really was very sorry to hear about she lady. Don't be. It's good riddance. Oh, come on now. No, oh, I get sick fed up when people tell me how she was too good for me. Especially when she kept telling me herself. Well, maybe the faults weren't all on one side. Oh, I'm sure that's what folk will be saying. I mean, after all, she came from a decent family, eh? I was just a son of a village drunk. You have your friends in Glendarach, too. Friends? Well, they don't seem too thick in the ground. Well, there's plenty of folk, though, want to poke their noses into my business. Tell me what I should be doing with my life. And God knows where you'd be if they hadn't. Well, I'm not going to poke my nose any further into your affairs. I came here to talk about my own. Oh, go ahead, then. If you neglect that ferry for much longer, you're going to endanger the education grant. And it goes a long way to keeping the ferry in business. You tell me I'm fired. No. Well, that's a pity. Save me the bother of quitting. Right. Do do I must that? say, I think yeah. this is quite yeah. improper. And we have no powers, Mr. Craig. Well, we could write to the education department and find out what the facts are. That oh. would only spread the rumour further afield. We all know what happens when a rumour mm. spreads. Indeed we do, mm. Isabel. <laughs> Look at us sitting here tonight solemnly discussing what must be the silliest rumour I've ever heard. Here, here. Right, you can leave it like that if you want, but I won't. Upon reflection, Mr. Craig, I think you may well be right. What? Oh, good. It would hardly be fair to leave the matter unresolved and thereby leave the slightest shadow of suspicion on the character of one of the finest ladies I have ever known. That's right. She's so, a nice person. we investigate. <coughs> uh, is that the view of the meeting? So, well, that uh, there's a much easier way of doing it than that. What? Going through the official bodies, we can put the question directly to Miss Simmons. That's all right by me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, then, would you care to be the one who asks her? Ah, uh, second thoughts, Mr. Craig. I think it would be better if a woman asked her. I would that. Well, it would seem we're uh, looking for a volunteer. Well, unpleasant though the task may be, I am quite prepared to undertake the duty. <coughs> we all greatly appreciate your offer, Mrs. Mack, but uh, perhaps it might be better done by someone whose status in the community was less uh, imposing. Oh. Well, you have a point there, mm. I admit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're still seeking a uh, volunteer. Oh, no, I... Oh, Miss Simmons. I'm terribly sorry. I thought you'd have finished and started the choir practice for now. From such scenes does old Scotia's grandeur spring. Oh, did I get that wrong? Well, if I knew what you were talking about, I might be able to help you. Oh, it's from Robert Burns, Unhappy Rural Domesticity. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, I shall miss it. Oh, but not for a while. He won't be leaving us just yet. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to be going home very soon, my dear. Oh, that's a shame. What's the rush? I don't want to go, but my... Uh, Publisher is pressing me for my next book. Write it here. Oh, I can't. Glendarroch is so distracting. Uh, it's just one mad round of wild activity. <laughs> well, it is to me. I, I get so involved in the life of the place. It eats up all my capacity for excitement. No, I need the calm and peace of the city. So, when are you off then? Oh, quite soon, I'm afraid. But there's one thing I must do before I go. What's that? I must make sure that Thomas is safe from that dreadful man, Snedden. Mm. 
Yeah. 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 You coming, Isabel? Uh, no, I'll catch you up, right? right, right. Well, I don't know what to suggest, Minister, but something will have to be done. Oh, night, Oh, dear. What shall we do? Dry. You've heard him. I'm sorry to say, Isabel, it, it, his voice is worse than ever. It's getting louder, too. It's almost physically painful to listen to him. Isabel, I've no choice. I'll have to cancel the concert at Octane. Oh, no, don't do that. But it's almost a civic duty to prevent him singing in public. Well, look, leave it to me. I'll, I'll just tell him straight out that he, he can't sing now. Well, he'll be deeply hurt if you do. Others will be worse hurt if I don't. Well, that was a most interesting rendition of the Sky Boat song. <laughs> it was absolutely disgraceful. The Prince would never have got on board. The uh, problem is receiving my full attention, Mrs. Mack. Oh, Miss Simmons, I wonder uh, if I could have a wee word with you sometime. Of course. Uh, in private. You could maybe pop along to the shop one lunchtime. Why, yes. Right. Good night, then. Don't you right. worry about a thing, dear. The whole village is behind you. Wonder who could be this time of night? Yeah, I were just passing, but I thought we'd pop in and see how you were. I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for bringing me home this afternoon. <sighs> well, it's all part of the service. Yeah. Well, thanks anyway. We'll have a few questions. Yeah. Hey, about the brawl this afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry. I heard you were in the vicinity of the village hall this morning. Y yeah. Yeah, I might have been. About 10.15? Aye, that could be. Did you go into the hall? <laughs> what would I go in there for? A wee chat with Mrs. Mack? Just answer the questions. Did you go into the hall, lady? No, I didn't. Look, what's all this about? No, it didn't hurt to answer, did it? Well, why the third degree? Well, I heard you were in the Octavon Bar this morning with quite a lot of money. Mm, Fergus would have told you that. You were flashing it round the bar. I oh, said, so what if I was? Now, would you like to tell me where he got the money? No, I wouldn't. Maybe you'd better. I'm telling you damn all. Mm -hmm.